Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on extending our custom post type manager to list all the custom post types that we created and have different options to add a new custom post type, edit a pre-existing custom post type or delete that custom post type. So let's take a look on how to do it. First, if we access the administration panel that we currently have in our CPT manager page, you see that we have just this simple form. So what I want to do, I want to reuse the HTML code of my template for my dashboard to have these uh, tab separation that I created and it's really useful to have in the first tab the list of custom post types that I generated with a nice repeater field and then having another tab to have the form to add a new field. So let's do it. Let's access our code editor and let's access our templates admin.php where we are printing all the stuff for our admin first page. Well, we can just simply copy everything that we did from the UL except the settings error and stuff like that until the last div. Let's copy this stuff. We can paste them here and let's replace all the things that we don't need. So first, instead of manage settings, let's name the first tab your custom post types. The second tab is going to be add custom post type. And here we can have maybe an export tab. We can see how we can export the all the custom post types that we generated as a SQL dump or maybe a PHP script to uh, paste it into a functions file, stuff like that. But yeah, we can have a third tab called export. That's going to be like pretty interesting to see if it works. Let's cut the form with our CPT settings and everything and let's replace it with the one that we had from the first page. So we don't need the plugin settings, but we want our CPT settings. Let's indent it properly. Tab one, this one, it's gonna be add custom post type. So create, we can have a title like create a new custom post type. And here we can export your custom post types, something like that. And of course, because we generated these three tabs with the first one is going to be the list of the post type and the second one has the form to add the post type, we need to move the form in the second part. So in the second option, let's cut this out and let's add it here. Awesome. And here we can have an H3 in the first tab called manage your custom post types, something like that. Really, really straightforward. Perfect. Let's go in our administration area. Let's refresh. And now the first tab, of course, it's your custom post types, manage your custom post type, completely empty. The form is in the add custom post type section and the export, it's completely empty as well. Well, that's what we wanted. Now here, let's list all the custom post types that we have and we generated in the, in the previous lesson. In my case, I have comic books and products, so I should get those. And basically to get those, I already have the code in my custom post type controller because I generated those and I'm looping through those to dynamically generate my custom post type. So if we open the custom post type controller and it scroll, we scroll all the way down uh, to the store custom post types. We have these options, getting option, Alicat plugin CPT. That is the option in our WP option database table that stores all our custom post types. And here I'm looping through these options and accessing the type name, plural, singular name, all this kind of good stuff. Well, basically we have to do exactly the same. So let's do it. Let's copy these options, get options, and then the for each options has option. Let's go in the CPT and we can have here, open our PHP tags and let's go into another line. Let's be really clean and really organized the way we write our code. So options, we can get the get option Alicat plugin CPT. And here, let's loop through the for each. So for every option, I want to just simply echo the option singular name and let's maintain it consistent. Actually, let's use single quotes and then let's concatenate it with a breaking line like BR just to have a list. 
And if we refresh in the administration area, we have the full list of custom post types that we generated. Awesome. Before doing that, before now styling our repeater though, I want to avoid to trigger this for each if these options is completely empty because it could happen that the get option is not there. And if it's not there, this for each or actually this get option will trigger an error because we cannot do anything about it. Like it doesn't exist that option, so we cannot tap it. And we had this issue, if you remember, the first time that we activated the plugin when we decided to style our um, settings manager to activate all this stuff. This, the first time that we were saving something, all the options were getting stored with a positive value, with a one, value of one. So everything was saved because we didn't have that option before. So we're gonna solve the problem in the same way. We're gonna store that option starting from empty natively as soon as we activate our plugin. And to deal with that, we wrote our method in the activate.php file. So if we open that and we go in the only method and the only static function that we have in this file, the activate, you notice that here we are checking if we have the option Alicap plugin, just return the script, don't do anything, otherwise store a default empty array in it. Well, we need to adapt this because now if I want to check if we have the other type of option that we're checking, so the Alicap plugin CPT, I cannot put it below here, because if we have these options already, this is gonna return and it is not gonna work. And whatever things happens later is not gonna get triggered. So it's better to reorganize this, not to handle positives like success, but to handle errors. So let's do it. Basically, we can say that if the get options alicat is not there and is not like is not defined we can store this actually let's generate this default array here and we can say that okay if this is not defined let's update the alicat plugin option and because we don't have anything else after we can also remove the return and just simply Leave it like that. Okay, if the Alicat plugin options is not defined, update the option with the Alicat plugin and an empty array. We have this script, we can repeat it also for another if statement. If the Alicat plugin CPT option is not defined, update this option with an empty array. Fantastic. You see how cleaner is this code. We are not dealing with else statement. We are not dealing with callback. We're only dealing with self-contained. It's a sort of like step function. This is just a function that deals with just one declaration. And if it's this is false, like we're expecting, do something. Otherwise, don't do anything else. Like the script continues to read without having a return, without forcing the script to stop. So this is really clean and it's easily extendable if we wanna add multiple options like we're gonna do in the future. But for now, this takes care of storing an empty array in the case the user activates the plugin the first time and we don't have any CPT stored in our WP option. We are safe to loop the for each even if this option is completely empty because it's still an array and it's not gonna trigger an error. That's perfect. Now we can style the printing of this information of our custom post types. And I'm gonna do this by using tables. I know it's kind of horrible and you shouldn't do that, but it's okay. <laughs> we, can, we can do it for now. Like you're free to style these however you want. You can use Flexbox, CSS grid. I'm gonna just echo table and then I'm gonna echo the closing of the table here. And then let's style here the TH that stands for table header. And let's close the TH and let's write a bunch of table columns, TD, TD. And this table column is gonna be ID. And we can say uh, singular, singular name, and then we can print the uh, plural name and then we want to print whatever other information we're storing. What do we have in the form here? Plural name, singular name, it's public or archive. Okay, we can have public and archive just to respect all the information that we have in our form. So it's public 
and then archive. Perfect. Now let's copy this list of TDs without having the TH, but we're going to store inside here and we're going to use in this case the double quotes. If you echo with double quotes, automatically all the PHP variables will be printed. So we can write HTML and PHP in line and PHP will, ge will get recognized and print, which is pretty fantastic. So we can wrap all this stuff around a TR, that it's a table row. And here we can also close uh, TR table row. Okay, the singular name should be inside here. Perfect. And the plural name, it's here. We can replace it. Plural. Then here we can have the post type. And then here we can have public and archive or actually I think these are different has public or has archive uh, to, to, to public is okay and has archive is the other option so we have to rename it with has archive okay let's do something like that this is super dirty this doesn't look good but let's leave it like that for now and all these options should be wrapped around curly brackets in order to get printed normally because these are not regular variables, but are array and we're accessing the array key. And here also we have an error. This is not th, but this is tr because it's the table row. And then all these tds in the header, they should be th because these are table headers. Okay, perfect. Let's save it. Let's check in our admin area. There you go. Now we have our awful, awful and terrible table that we have the ID comic book, product, are these ID, singular name, comic book, product, plural name, comic books, products. Then if it's public, it's archive. Awesome. Let's customize it a little bit to make it look less ugly. Perfect. Now we have our super simple table where we're listing all our custom post types with all the major options here. And we have a couple of links that we can style and manage to edit the post type or delete the post type. Okay, I'm gonna conclude the tutorial here. I know it's not like, we didn't do much. It's not like many informations and stuff like that. We just simply created these tabs and then we're listing the custom post type in this table. But this is a perfect starting point for you to do a bunch of things. So what I'm gonna do before the next tutorial, I'm gonna style this thing to actually have like change these numbers. So if the public is set to one, I'm gonna say like change this to yes. If it's set to zero, it's gonna say no. And I wanna, I want you to do that. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of CSS styling to have this edit and delete different colors or maybe using some icons or like default icons of WordPress with the dash icons and stuff like that. And I want you to do the same, just like have fun in experimenting with these thing. And maybe if you want, like don't use a table, you can use a Flexbox, you can use CSS Grid, you can use whatever you want and style this table to list all your custom post types and update these options consequentially. In the next lesson, we're gonna see how to edit this post type, how to delete and create a confirmation message before deleting it. And then we're gonna complete the uh, options to create a new custom post type uh, to add uh, all the features that we're currently missing. So all the options to customize the custom post type, change the location, update the icon of the custom post type. We don't want the default icon. We wanna give the users the ability to customize those icons. So we're gonna do all of that in the next upcoming episodes. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can check the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel, and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.